Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. A feast is made for laughter, and wine make it merry, but money and salad all things. I am so convinced and pleased to tell you that the message you are about listening to is a deep one. The Holy Spirit gave the message to me in two parts. So this one is when there is no money. You will love it. I want you to like this message. I want you to comment after hearing the message. And I also want you to share it. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube. The Lord bless you abundantly. For watching, uh, for listening to my messages on YouTube, I believe you want to make heaven, you want to serve the Lord, you want to be a good Christian everywhere you go, you want to affect lives positively because my messages evolves around the aforementioned points. I'm not a minister of the people by the people and for the people that will end up destroying the people. No. I am a minister of God, called, ordained, commissioned to save souls, disciple them, and prepare them for the imminent rapture. That you are a Christian, that doesn't mean you must remain poor. If you are hardworking, if you are calculative, if you invest the little you have and you are accountable to know the state of your flocks according to the scripture, you do the needful. As you are serving the Lord, you are not lazy. You engage yourself in laudable, wonderful, and correct businesses. You are going to be rich. You are going to make it in life. The Bible says money answers all things. What does that mean? Your needs can be cured up till 75, 85, or even 95% of them in life with money. Money don't give the kingdom of God to people. Money don't write people's name in the book of life. Money don't automatically make people become the friends of God. That is, uh, how do I put it now? You understand me. There are certain spiritual sensitive matters that money cannot handle. Money cannot handle your salvation. Money cannot take you to heaven. Money cannot make you a friend of God. It is your attitude that has changed, your receptivity to the word of God, and your relationship with Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, Messiah, Redeemer, the coming King. Therefore, if you are here to give your life to Jesus, I'd like you to do that right away. Because if you run after money, run a rat race after money, you get the money, you live the kind of life you want to live, perhaps for 100 or 120 years. Eventually you die and you leave this world. Your money will be forgotten. Your posterity will be forgotten. Your name will be forgotten. Your affluence becomes irrelevant. Houses and complaints and whatever you have in life that makes people to refile you, to praise you, to love you and sing your honor becomes the thing of the past. Therefore, be careful today and do the needful first, first and foremost. Surrender your life to Jesus. Give him the totality of your life. Hand over your life into his hands. He cares and he knows tomorrow for you.
ever before you get there. When there is no money, listen to my defense before I give you some points that you will go through when you don't have money in your hand. That's why you must be hardworking and you blade the tray on time. This procrastination you've, uh, you are known for. <laughs> By the time it comes back to, to, to bite you, it will bite you mercilessly. It will bite you in, in terms of hunger, nakedness, and servitude. Wake up. It's time to jack back to life and be responsible. Take the bull by the horn and be careful about your future. Run with the opportunities you have now. Get them invested into your life. Otherwise, you will regret it much later in your life. It is my prayer that money will not abuse you. You're not saying amen. Money will not insult you or limit your speed in life. I've seen people limited in life. The speed of their life were being limit, was being limited because uh, they do not have sufficient money. I'm saying it again. Money will not abuse you. Money will not insult you. Money will not limit the speed of your life in Jesus' name. Do you know that families had become disintegrated because of money? Most wayward and uncontrollable and even wicked young adults in our society are traceable to families found insufficiency and poverty. And as a result, they began to fend for themselves and that made them look for money at all cost. They're going to illicit businesses. The world is generally worshipping money today. And those who lack money are treated as second-class citizens everywhere. This is the reason behind unimaginable, unimaginable maltreatment, unimaginable modern-day atrocities and inhuman treatment people give themselves. Monetary issues has become a global, a global plague. Insatiable desire, uncontrollable anxiety, or do or die affairs for many. And the most you know, annoying aspect of it is that the so-called Christians are not exempted. This is serious. It is a serious matter. Serious matter. The truth of the matter is this, and it has to be told. Lack of money brings shame, insult, mockery, derision, hunger, nakedness, and insecurity. Lack of money brings downtrodden, mediocrity, fighting in the family, misunderstanding amongst husbands and wives, rejection, indebtedness, and slavery. I mean, when there is no money, you will be backward. Anxiety and sleeplessness will not be far away from you. People will be thinking that you have slept in the night or known to them that you are just reading the ceilings in the night. You are not sleeping. When you consider the, the workload on you demanding money, the bills yet to be settled, and yet there is no money or insufficient one in your hand, you cry, you sob, you look for the way of escape at all costs. That's why you see people, many young ladies now, giving, in, giving themselves to prostitution, nudity. And then on, even on the net, you see them posing nude. Yes, posing nude on the net because they know men will watch it, men will do this and do that. And that will increase their likes and their subscribers. It will get to a point that YouTube will help them you know, monetize it. They monetize evil for you. Your judgment is great in the sight of God. That's what insufficient money or a complete lack of faith can bring to anyone. When there is no money, lack of money, it brings shame. It brings insult, mockery. Derision, hunger, nakedness, insecurity, downtrodden, mediocrity, fighting in the family, misunderstanding amongst husbands and wives, rejection, indebtedness, slavery, backwardness, anxiety, and sleeplessness. However, 
As a child of God, you must remain firm, focused, and determined to skirt through life's challenges uncompromisingly. No matter what you are facing, remain uncompromising in your Christian life, knowing fully well that God is ever faithful to all his promises towards his children. Let nothing deceive you into error, child of God. Let nothing deceive you into error. God have you in mind, regardless of your present situation and predicament. Just keep believing him. Keep serving him. Keep walking and waiting patiently for your turn to smile and harvest of testimonies. They are coming. Believe God. Walk with your hand. Don't be lazy. Do the needful. And then you patiently wait for God's intervention over your life. You will smile. You will have testimonies in no time. Money answered all things. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19, you need money to build your own house or to buy your own house. You need money to buy a ride of your choice. You need money to send your children to good schools. You need money to live well. You need money to clothe. You need money to appear to appear rich, presentable, and corporate in the society. You need money to do things that are naturally normal for you. You need money to live well, to live fine. You need money to care for the people around you. The value of money, the importance of money, the role of money in your life can never be overemphasized. You need money. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. You surely need money. But you have to be very careful on how you get the money you are looking for. Don't kill to get money. Don't go into ritualism to make money. Don't falsify accounts where you work or because you are desperately in need of money. Don't jit your wife or your husband because you need money. Don't go into prostitution. Don't become a smuggler. Don't kill. Don't maim. Don't carry concussion around. Stop incision because you need money. Don't make charms because of money. These are roots and devilish ways that God will judge whosoever falls into it all because they need money to survive. I want you to understand that your present level now is another man's prayer point. So why must you destroy your future before it comes? Wait. Wait. Wait patiently for God to enrich you and to bless you. You need money. When there is no money, number one, shame will come knocking. When there is no money, life will be difficult to live. When there is no money in your hand, achievement will not multiply. When there is no money, you will not be valued or respected in many quarters. When there is no money, only a few people will care about you. When there is no money, regret, discouragement will set in in no time. When there's no money, ideas and planning will not be appreciated. Who wants to know the quantum of ideas in your head that could generate money? But until people begin to see the money in your life and uh, in what you lay your hand upon to do, respect remains at limbo. When there is no money, people won't even <laughs> sing your praise. How many times have you seen the worldly musician singing the praises of mad people? Never. What are they going to get as a result of that? They don't waste their effort. They don't invest their effort or what will not transcend and translate to money. Eventually, when there is no money, people will not sing your praise. When there is no money, you are simply on your own. Live on your own. Die on your own. Go wherever you want to go on your own. Even your relatives will not care about you. I want to ask you, is it true that all your relatives have your phone number? No. They don't need your phone number because to them you are useless. In so many families, ungodly families, yes, I, I make bold to say 
they are the ungodly families if they refuse to to check on you or because you are still struggling you have not found your footing yet as far as prosperity breakthrough and wealth is concerned in life they tend to treat you as a second class citizen if you come from a family like that that's a poor family that's not a godly family a godly family will walk and wait patiently for God's intervention in their lives. When there is no money, friends are few. Because wealth has uh, many friends, but poverty is an orphan. When there is no money, even your classmates will not ask after you. When there is no money, one will be sad, moody, and tearful. When there is no money, many projects will stop. Don't cry. I can see you in the realm of the spirit. Don't cry. Wipe your tears. Money is coming your way. God is bringing it. But then you have to walk. You have to walk. Don't sit down at home expecting that money will come. It doesn't work out like that. Too. When I say God is bringing the money to you, not that God will go to central bank of your country and bring money to you. No, you're going to walk, and God will breathe into the work of your hands, and money will come. That's how God brings money. You walk, you wait patiently for God to do it in your life. When there is no money, the extended family can carry on without you. I say, Brasso and so is not yet here. I say, and so what? Whether he comes here or not, what effect has he? over a decision. We are talking about money. We are not talking about age. I don't know, maybe your situation has gotten to that level. That's why I want you to seriously pray after this meeting that God should remember you and teach you what you can do, what you can do to become satisfied, to become independent, that people will stop seeing you as a liability in the society. When there is no money, you hardly sleep well. You can't sleep well. When there's no money, efforts don't show. How many people do you want to tell that you have written application letter to several complaints and themes and parastatus and none of them considered you to be suitable enough for employment? You have traveled far and wide. You went there, you went there over and over again and nothing is coming in. You went to see this and so and so. You are asking for solutions to your problems, but nobody's giving you. How many people do you want to tell about the efforts you have made, the efforts you have invested into your life, not just wanting to remain in the position of poorness, and yet the more effort you are making, the poorer you become. But the good news is the tide is turning in your favor in the name of Jesus. When there is no money, you eat what you see. You don't eat what you want. When there is no money, you groan in pain silently. When there is no money, you will doubt your own ability to do well. Well, let me just give it up here. No, don't give it up. There is God in heaven watching over your life. There is God in heaven in love with your life. Don't give up. Don't kill yourself, please. Wait patiently. The Lord will do it. He has done it before. Your case will not make him a liar. Wait patiently on the Lord. He will do it. You will rejoice and praise his name at the end of the day. I tell you the truth. Money is coming. Bow down your heads and pray. I don't want to go to find a message. Short exhortation. The, tell the Lord to remember you. Tell the Lord to open unto you doors of uh, profit, doors of wealth, doors of prosperity, doors of connection. Tell the Lord to connect you with the eye and the mighty in the land. Tell the Lord to remember the work of your hands. Tell the Lord to teach you the shortcut to making it in life. And what is the shortcut in making it in life? You look for a suitable job you can do. The job that is in line with the law of your country. The job that the law of your country permits. The kind of job that will not get you into trouble. The kind of job that people can say, I love this and they will go after it. And the law enforcement agency of your country will not be trailing your life because you have become, you have become a criminal in the society. I'm talking about good jobs. 
that God can praise. Based on uh, Psalm 90, verse 17. Yes, pray. God is hearing. God is listening. He will answer you. He has done it for me. He will do it for you too. I'm going to hear your testimony in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.